Hello everybody, this is Ron Kessler at Santiago Canyon College. If you haven't had my classes, I want to introduce myself. I teach robotics and programming and general computer science classes. I teach Visual Basic, C Sharp, some Java, JavaScript, and so forth. And today I wanted to show you something that I have uh, shown some of you in the classroom. You know that we've been using our LEGO NXT robots to do all kinds of cool challenges and stuff. And you know that normally when you want to do that, you've got to program the LEGO with either the LEGO G programming language that comes with the NXT, or you can program it in Robot C, or not exactly C, or a version of Java that they call Lejos. Today, though, what I wanted to show you, which I thought would be kind of cool, is to demonstrate for you how I can actually move my robot around without any programming to the machine itself, completely with my new Windows Phone 8. And I wanted to show you that um, if I open up this little app, which I call the NXT Pilot, what it's going to do is it's going to use the information from the phone sensor through a Bluetooth connection into the Lego and make it work. And the nice thing about this is you don't have to do any programming to the Lego itself. So if I turn on my little NXT here, I can give you a little quick demo. I tried to make the application look like the, the uh, Lego brick. And the first thing that I would suggest you do when you want to start this up is you go down here to the little app bar. You see this little guy here? And you can go into the About box where I just have some information and give you my web address and so forth. Or go into the settings. And what I did was I set it up so that you can tell the phone where your LEGO motors are connected. As you know, there are three ports that you can connect your motors to in the LEGO brick. By default, LEGO uses the B port, the center port, for the left motor and C for the right. So that's what I programmed uh, by default. But you can just use these little radio buttons in here and just set up whatever you want. The other thing that I want you to do in the class, because we're going to have 30 robots running around, you want to go in here to the text box and you want to type in the name of your particular robot. That way you're not going to end up trying to run somebody else's. And then you hit the backspace and say save, and it'll save all those settings. As long as you don't delete the NXT Pilot from your phone, those settings will stay in the solid state memory that's reserved for your application inside the phone for as long as you have it. Now, of course, if you delete it and have to reinstall it, then you're going to have to do those settings all over. So let me give you a little quick demo of what happens. Um, remember now, uh, I used the LEGO uh, Bluetooth developer information that they give you freely, and they show you how to uh, transmit or stream 12 bytes of information from the phone to the Lego. So there's no programming involved in the Lego. So any of these other robots that I have or that you have that just have two motors, you should be able to control them real easily without it having to do anything to the to the motor, uh, to the Lego itself. So watch, if I hit go, what it's going to do is going to connect and find my uh, paired little robot. Now the way I did this, I can do this and show you. You want, to, you want to hold your phone. I have a Nokia 920 phone. You want to hold it so the buttons, the control buttons that I have here, they're up here on the top. And I just kind of hold it this way. When it's sitting like this, you can see that the motors stop. And I want to tell you that the, the accelerometer in this thing is really, really sensitive, as you'll see. So if I just tilt my phone forward a little bit, you'll see that the motors go forward. If I tilt it back, it goes backwards. I've got it up on the box because I can't talk, show you, and film all at the same time. And if you turn it just a little bit, you can see that I can really control it very precisely. The reason is the accelerometer is ex incredibly sensitive, but as you know, the rotation sensors inside the LEGO servos, inside their motors, are also pretty darn accurate. So between the two, you can really control your robot uh, rather precisely. I also want to show you that I put a camera button on here, and, and I have to tell you that the main reason I did that is I just wanted to see if I could uh, make the camera come up in one of my own windows that I created. That's why I'm trying to do that. And I'm thinking in the next version, I'll set it up so that you can actually record the video as you're running your robot. Now if you hit back, this goes back to here. I also want to show you a couple things. If for some reason you accidentally hit the start button menu and your phone comes back to here, you'll see that the robot keeps going. It is going to keep responding to the last command you gave it. So if that happens, you just hit the back button here, and now you're once again in complete control of it. So probably what you want to do as you run it around the classroom, when you, if you want to do something else on your phone, just hit the stop button 
so it quits sending commands to the actual brick itself. Okay, so I wanted to I wanted to show you that we can uh, have some really uh, cool things that you can build working with devices. And we've talked about embedded programming. We've talked about doing all kinds of things in Visual Basic and C Sharp. And I wanted you to see that you can do some really fun things if you put all that stuff that we're learning together. This one was written in C Sharp, and of course. As I've told you, any time you're working with file I.O., reading and writing to a disk file or to a USB or up to SQL Azure, uh, you want to make sure that you have structured error handling in all of your code, and of course this does. If I turn off the Lego and I try to connect, it's going to say, hey, I can't find the robot. Uh, you sure it's turned on? And then it stops and gives you another chance. So you want to make sure that you use your structured error handling, and this is full of try-catch blocks to, to catch all the possible things that can happen. And I also want to remind you that, you remember when we used our XB radios and our Wi-Fi radios to, to move our uh, Bobots? This is kind of the same thing. The, the phone and the robot are really talking through what's called a Bluetooth socket, and it's nothing more than a communications port, a serial communications port. And I tested it the other day. I was outside of B208, and I, wrote, I drove this all the way over to the bookstore, which is like 75 feet. Then I went the other direction, down by the, the uh, Humanities Building, and I ran out of room. So I'm thinking that this little sucker will go maybe 100 feet, which is pretty impressive. It'll get so far away, it's hard for you to even see it. If it, if it gets out of sight, it goes around behind a, a bush or something. Okay? So... Uh, I, I encourage you to look at it, play with it, check it out, figure out. Uh, I'll, I'll show you in class a little bit how it works. Uh, once it's certified and on the um, Windows Store, you'll be able to download it and put it onto your device. I have not tested it on my Surface yet, but that's my goal so that I can see if I can run it on a little bigger screen. And um, I hope that you have uh, some fun with it. All right, so enjoy. Thank you.